I love playing the silent game with you. Well, every time I start, you're like, I know. Oh, well, you started. So I always wait for you to start. And then also, you wait for me. Well, you also have, we wait for each other. And also, um, every time we press record, all of a sudden your face lights up with a big smile. It and does. I don't know, if, I don't know if it's just for me or if it's because you have exciting things to say. And I'm like, oh, now I'm it's not going to say anything. I'm just thrilled. I'm just thrilled to be here. But I do, I see what you're saying. You're reading the room and you're like, oh, I'm like, oh, she's fucking prepared. Something. Yeah. Um, well, I do have a couple of ghost stories now that we're starting oh. off. Oh. I have oh yes I forgot I forgot Christine okay so we we just had our last big leg of shows and when we were in New Orleans Christine you called me first or texted me first and you were like I have things to tell you and then I saw you in person then you're like oh actually I'm gonna wait for when we record the problem was I was telling Eva (laughs) at the bar downstairs and you walked in and I was like oh man I want to tell this story to Em but I want to wait for the podcast just because I feel like it's nice to have these stories like you know immortalized uh yeah yeah, and have everybody else here along with you um kind of the nature of our show um it's nothing it's nothing like that crazy but i just feel like a lot happened in a week where i was like this is the kind of thing i would call em about (laughs) so yeah we had halloween Mm -hmm. okay halloween happened and leona was a tomato go to my instagram she wore a beret and i sewed it (laughs) together and i was so proud of myself i'm proud Uh, of you for sewing also Thank you. I didn't own a sew. I was like, I'm going to sew this felt on. And Lisa was visiting and my mom was there and they were like, well, where's your needle and thread? I was like, I don't own that. Why would I need that for sewing? What what would I want that for? (laughs) Where would I? Yeah. So they had to go buy me one. Anyway. um, But that day, so we made friends down the street. Their names are Troy and David, Troy and David. And they're, and Uh they're, they're great. And they're so into Halloween. And uh, Lisa befriended them at Leona's first birthday party and then invited them to dinner uh, like a few weeks later when she visited and the first thing and they, they they know nothing about me okay and the first thing that Troy says when he sits down is oh I went and saw um, this uh, paranormal investigator named Amy Bruni last night and I like dropped what I was holding thank god it wasn't wine <laughs> um, it was probably just like a cracker but I dropped it and I was like you have got to be kidding me and he's like oh you know who that is and I was like uh do I watch kindred spirits with chip coffee and Jesus. Amy Br- anyway and I was like of course I know who Amy Bruni is and so he was like whoa like he was totally taken aback because I I don't know he just didn't expect me to know that and I was like well I host a paranormal podcast and he was like you do what like it was just (laughs) one of those fun moments where he was like oh my god I have so many things to tell you and poor Lisa is even by the way I learned more of a skeptic than Blaze like Blaze yeah dead serious like Blaze was trying to tell Lisa like no it was scary you had to be there (gasps) for certain things and Lisa was like "Mm -hmm, okay (laughs) so she was just not having it she was very polite like she let she's like i believe that you believe it and i was like wow that hurts that that that's like you have every right to be wrong yeah yeah (laughs) yeah i was like ouch okay fine um but he was talking about you know and and then he said to me he looked in my eye and he said do you want to know about your house and i was like sorry we're sitting in my house do i want to of course i want to and he's like it's it's nothing bad. And I was like, well, now that you've said it, I have to know, you know, whether it's bad or not. And it wasn't anything that crazy, but he basically said the the woman who, which I think I did mention to you when we saw each other, mm-hmm. but the woman who used to live here, uh, right, who sold us the house, um, apparently took him aside one day at like an event, at, like a block party or something and was like, hey, can I talk to you? Uh, you know, because I guess she knew he's the one to talk to about ghostly encounters. He must and really she, be making a name for himself. I like- love that people so just impressed. know immediately i mean now i'm making a name for him if he hasn't done it already <laughs> you really you really stepped in and said this town ain't big enough for the two of us like i'm <laughs> i'm the podcaster here oh i was thrilled i was like finally a kindred spirit get it and so <laughs> anyway he said that the the woman who used to live here uh she took him aside one day and said hey you know there's the weirdest thing happening uh every time my husband leaves town 
and she had two little two young kids she said every time my husband leaves town and i'm asleep in our bedroom um i'm woken up in the middle of the night by this rocking chair which by the way i said that's your that's her first problem i mean i don't know what she what she expected putting a rocking chair in her bedroom but Mm. she said i'm woken up by this rocking chair rocking and not just like swaying but like as if someone's just sitting in it and rocking back and forth Mm. And she said it happens repeatedly, but only when her husband's traveling. And I was like, and he goes, but maybe you don't share the same room. And I'm like, we definitely share the same room. So, (laughs) you know, I don't have a rocking chair in there. Maybe that's a thing to test out. I've never felt anything in that room, really, only in the hallways. So maybe it's leaving me alone. Maybe it went with her. I don't know. But Fingers um, crossed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's the first thing. Oh but then God. on Halloween night, um, this is the thing I haven't told you yet. Oh, and God. it's nothing like humongous. I already have. I already have goose cam. Ah! I don't, I don't oh know why. Oh my God! Your arm has an eyebrow because you have that eyebrow feature turned on. Oh my God! I was like <laughs> so offended for a second. No. Oh my God! No. Where's Where's the eyebrows? It. Hold on. Move it a little bit up. Move it a little bit. Oh, where to go? There. Oh, there. 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 Ah! <laughs> what That's if the whole so time stupid. it was just your arm hair? And I was like, oh, <laughs> now I'm the real asshole. <laughs> I was like, do I have one thick follicle? Like, what's it happening? It has a big unibrow. <laughs> if that were the case, I would just do this and have crazy eyebrows yeah, all the time. Then you could, <laughs> then you could really own the like the like model look, yeah. the big big brow look. <laughs> the woe is me. I call <laughs> the, it. The woe is me uh, unibrow. <laughs> um okay halloween and, night oh 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 so it's nothing crazy but my mom and i walked inside and we had such a great time like i feel like this was the first halloween since we've been here where people were really out and like it was you know it felt like a, a normal halloween so to speak like a, it felt almost like a pre-covid halloween like there were oh wow neighbors out just like at their houses like everyone was just chatting and you know there were i think seven to eight hundred kids went through like it was holy shit it was a lot um but so afterward, we like packed everything up. We went inside. My mom and I were just standing in kind of like the the lob, like the the lobby. I don't know the foyer. I don't know how to. S- what's the <laughs> entrance with to the a size house? of your house? It is a lobby. <laughs> but okay, <laughs> <laughs> lobby. No, we were like standing right in front of the right by the front door. It was kind of dark, and my mom said something like, "Wow, this really reminds me of um, our Halloween's growing up. You know, just like how fun and special and happy they were." and I was getting a little emotional and I was like, yeah, you're, you're right. This just felt really special. And I said, I, I hope this is probably a weird thing to say. I don't know. But I said something like, I hope the house like appreciates us being here. Cause like Leona had so much fun. And I just said, I hope the house is happy. We're here. And I swear to God, somebody like gently, like in a nice way, put their hands on my arm as if to like, hold on to my arm. Shut uh, up. And I'm standing there and I go, mom, 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 mom. And she's like, what? And I was like, someone's holding my arm. Someone's holding my arm. And then she like got all emotional. And I was like, you're not scared. I'm terrified. You're not scared. And she was like, well, they're just they're just saying thank you for for, you know, making this a happy house. And I was like, stop it. Stop it. But somebody was holding on to my like one arm on my forearm and one on my upper arm, just kind of like holding on to my side sort of to be like, Crazy. you know. It was, it was one of those moments where I was like, mom, somebody's literally grabbing my arm. And instead of being like, what are you talking about? She's like, oh, that's so nice. And I was like, don't act like this is normal. Could, could you feel like fingers? Like, could you feel it, a hand or it was, was it pressure? Yeah, it was like a pressure. It was like, but it was almost like, oh, I knew somebody was standing there. Mm. Was I it, did it feel, so. was there a temperature change at all? Yeah, it was, it was warm and Aww. it was like kind of tingly. Like, you know how I remember when I used to say like, I would get like a tingly feeling in my left arm and mm-hmm. then I wasn't sure if it was a heart attack or a, a ghost, ghost or both, <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> which no precipitated way. the other. I don't know. But, um, but yeah, it was, and it's, it's hard to explain, but it was just one of those moments where I was like, whoa. And I was standing in the like front of my house in the dark and I was like, wow, this feels, and it wasn't really scary. It was just like very touching and um well hey special. at least you got the approval um, i know i was relieved about that but um i mean that that does debunk the uh theory originally that they left with the rocking chair that's true maybe they're <laughs> just like a protective like a you know a maternal figure i have no idea yeah yeah did it feel maternal or? yes oh 100 wow. percent which cool. i didn't realize until i just said that out loud and i was like oh right yes it was definitely a woman standing there which is like I didn't see anybody, but ooh, how cool! Oh my it gosh, it was cool. It was very cool, and it's the first time that's happened in the house, so I felt like 
Oh God. Okay. Well, let's hope so, it's not getting too comfortable and yeah, yeah, great point. Let's hope that's that's where it stops. <laughs> like, thank you for the acknowledgement. Now let's let's separate. <laughs> now let's go our separate ways. Anyway, sorry. I know that was long, but um, no, I just had a lot to update you on. No, I've been waiting for a long time because we, whenever we had our New Orleans show, like definitely over a week ago, you were like, I have a ghost story for you. And then we did the thing of like, oh, we can't talk about it till you record. I know. <laughs> I hope it wasn't too disappointing. I know it wasn't anything no. crazy happened, but it did it's, feel very real. It's interesting that you're the one that has now seen a ghost and felt a ghost. Mm. Um, so I feel like I'm just like actively... I don't know, just talking about it enough that maybe they think like, oh, they've already had that experience. We don't or maybe do <laughs> you're more like, well, why don't you leave me alone? And I I'm do more say, like, ooh, no, I had you. a glass of wine. Come say hi. And you're like, what are you doing? Stop it. Yeah, I definitely want to, um, you know, have an exchange outside of my home from separate uh, aisles or something. But <laughs> Meanwhile, like, I, I'm like, come visit. <laughs> yeah, you're like, let's snuggle. And I'm like, let's... <laughs> let's text you know <laughs> you can what's you can whatsapp me and we'll yeah. see if you're if i'm around the ouija whatsapp yeah <sighs> i i'm very excited for you i'm also really excited it did not happen to me but i'm like <laughs> so <laughs> but i am very happy that that happened what a spooky thing and to happen on all on halloween Eve. and i had been thinking the whole time because we had recorded our halloween episode already and i was just thinking like wow you know i'm talked about it being like thinner between us and the other side and i don't know it just felt very poignant yeah i wonder if day. i wonder if they want to talk to you more often but halloween was just the easiest maybe you know i wonder cool. if they were just thrilled and they they were like thank god you're not the type to uh what did people used to do cabbage each other's houses <laughs> <laughs> they're like thank god there's no more commit arson <laughs> yeah commit arson yeah and i'm like i hope we make them happy and they're like well you're just sitting outside eating candy i think like it could be way worse yeah it could certainly be worse <laughs> I, I wonder if they were alive during the cabbage nights because that would have been oh. a nightmare oh boy well we'll know next year on halloween if a ghostly phantom cabbage flies through your window but what a dream that? what a yeah. dream um so, well, okay. Hey, well, also let's talk about our shows because we had a great, uh, we had a great last big leg. We've got oh only gosh. one city left. Yeah, we have Austin, and that's it. I feel so like, I don't know, sad. I cried, but you know. Yeah. Oh I'll wait, this again. comes out after our last show. Oh shit. Yeah. Know that I'll cry again, everybody. Well, we've <laughs> cried about it. Our show's over. We're very, very, like, bittersweet. Just, it's, it's, it's big. It's been a huge part of our lives for three years now. Three years out of 30 is a tenth of my life. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Whole, yeah. Is that right? 30 divided by three is 10. Whoa. Yeah. So that's why it feels really big. <laughs> And also, wow. it was definitely the most significant thing that's happened to us through COVID. It was the only consistent thing that we had. So Yeah, it's true. And it started pre-COVID and now is ending. Uh, I yeah. wouldn't say post-COVID, but you know what I mean? Like post- Book Bookending. Bookending it. It feels very bittersweet. And, yeah. uh, you know, I mean, we're going to, you know, do more live shows in the future. But this one was just like our, our big... It was project a, yeah it was definitely the one we we had never worked so hard on something no, before. no. and we <laughs> so. went to grad school so we really uh kicked it up a notch <laughs> well are you happy to be back with your little baby for a few days yeah i am and it, it was really hard that one week where i came home for halloween and then i was there for like 36 hours and left again and mm -hmm. it was just a lot um yeah. going back and forth and i know blaze is like you know, do, he's basically just home with her all the time. So he's like really um, doing uh, most of the work right now as far as like parenting goes. Um, so it, it was nice for us to take a little like <laughs> for me to be able to wake up with her and him to sleep past seven, you know. You know what you should do? Well, Blaze, if you listen, to, don't listen to this part. We should uh, we should you should we should plan a surprise vacation for the two of you or something Aww. For a, as like a thank you for him being there when you were doing all the touring. Oh, are you going to watch Leona during this vacation? Sure. Okay, great. Just bring her to LA. <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> um, but anyway, no, I, I am also, I've wanted to say blaze. If you are listening now, listen to this part. 
that uh <laughs> he really is just like such a trooper and i don't want it to sound like oh because he's a man and a exactly father, but because he's just a human being i think anyone's staying with a baby even if it's yours for that extended period of time absolutely like, it's a lot every, of work everyone needs a break even absolutely. if it's your kid and, and it's like it, exhausting like on a level of like emotionally and it's like a 24 7 like you're mm-hmm. just constant it's a constant job i mean any parent probably, listening knows that it's probably so frazzled just it's like, just yeah it frays your nerves for sure especially now that she's kind of at the point where she's like obsessed with climbing upstairs and oof. uh you know things where you're like constantly trying to corral or like be on edge but yeah it's yeah you're exactly right it's not like oh because he's the dad it's just like you know like if it I've, were you i'd be saying the same thing. yeah it's, yeah and i've been home with her for a weekend and i was like holy lord i cannot yeah. wait for him to come back so anyway snaps around the world for blaze for Everyone any parent for blaze. that's doing this alone Oof. or not alone it's a lot of freaking work okay it's a lot yeah. of work um but anyway anyway <laughs> i guess that's why we drink <laughs> i was gonna say that's why a lot of us drink i think what about you em the show I, ending the sh- the show is a big emotional one i'm trying to come up with like a um a light-hearted one um oh i'm seeing i i got um early access to see black panther tonight is that why that keeps coming up on my calendar and i'm like what do you oh I sorry keep, i keep no i just keep panicking like i have an event tonight at 8 p.m and yeah. i'm like marvel okay that no, must be m no that's me that's me uh okay. no i how just cool. like how, yeah, so it's my second pre-screening I've been invited to. I'm very excited. Um, Whoa! It's weird, though, because you know how Allison and I go to every movie together. Yeah. Uh, she is still traveling. <gasps> She's oh. in Colombia still. Um, uh, or I think she actually just got to D.C. and she's staying there for a week. Anyway, yeah. I'm not going to see her until for like, I'm not going to see her for another week. And then we see each other for two days and then we don't see each other for another like two and a half weeks so uh this is the first time we're seeing a marvel movie without each other it's very weird so i'm going to the screening and i don't have i'm just like going by myself this is a month full of brave moves we're making I'm very you're you and your husband are very brave for raising a baby who climbs and I'm very brave for going to a pre-screening for a Marvel hey, movie. It's, <laughs> listen, I don't know if I could do it. It's hard to go somewhere by yourself to an event, especially when it's like a networking thing. Yeah, exactly. Especially yeah. when you're supposed to like you're expected to talk to people. I mean, oof. yeah, it's a weird one. You're going to anyway. do great. It'll be fun. Thank you. Also, side note for anyone who cares, um, my Stranger Things Ego box. I told everyone that I made the box people probably know that by now um but uh the tape and the adhesive has finally fallen apart <gasps> and here is my actual ego box from stranger things I, <gasps> but it, if you're from stranger things no it's not um but it all the tape finally peeled off and it's now i have to rebuild it so to be fair now if you have to pack it up you can just lay it flat that's true that's a good it's point. easy to pack i um but also, I, I always wanted to show everybody. I've just never wanted to touch it because I could tell the adhesive was slowly falling oh. off. But what's interesting is because it was getting printed for the screen and you were only ever going to see it like this far away, you never have to, even if you saw the back for a second, you never pay attention to the details. But yeah. like you can see how pixelated it is on the back. Oh, my God. But it's supposed to look like, I think it was 1983. So it's the 1983 back of the Ego box. But it's like, it's so pixelated. You can't even read the like you can't read the ingredients or anything like it's just like such a random clearly they found whatever image they could and just worked and just went with it yeah just stretched it up but anyway now i have to put it together look at the original ingredients and like the original toaster they're like put this in a toast this is how it works (laughs) put it in a toaster there's one image it's a waffle in a toaster but yeah so it's um anyway i have to rebuild it but at least everyone got a sneak peek of it, I guess. But it's now that it's all. Ironically, the expiration date on it is November 22. Which no is... way. Isn't that crazy? Look. <laughs> and it said, oh, my God. It said, this is as long as I promised to 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 be. Oh, my it, God. That's isn't crazy. That crazy. I think it probably meant like November 22nd, 1983 or something. But 
it, it what are the odds in November 2022? It's pretty weird that it fell the, apart. It's the box weird. is over. Yeah. yeah. That's so weird. Anyway, um, that's why I drink, I suppose. Black Panther and Stranger Things and you for very serious reasons. <laughs> so Nah. I mean, I saw I I talked to a ghost, so you know. All right. Serious, well, it's not serious. Well, I did see that meme that everyone's tagging us in where it says like 40 minutes into the podcast, they say, well, let's jump right in. <laughs> well, so, let's jump right in. <laughs> let's cut to the chase. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I guess here at a hot 19 minutes, um, let's jump right in. Here is a ghost story for you. Um, it is one of the most haunted places in England. It's said to be the most haunted castle in England. <gasps> and it is called, I think I'm saying it right, the Barry Pomeroy, uh, Barry Pomeroy Castle. I can't wait. I love a haunted castle. I also love a haunted castle. But I will say early on, shockingly, Zach Bagans has not been here. Even better. Oh, <laughs> it's that means pure. we got the scoop. <laughs> we do. Yeah. Well, it's called the Barry Pomeroy Castle because it's in a village called Barry Pomeroy, which is in Devon County. Okay. So, um, and uh, the Pomeroy part comes from the Pomeroy family, who back in the 11th century. Oh, was, sure, 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 sure. Of course, the one you know. Yeah, yeah. Of course, we all remember fondly. Uh, the Pomeroys were a prestigious, uh, like prominent landowner. They were prominent landowners at the time. Uh, and so I'm, that's how they ended up with the land for Barry Pomeroy. I don't know where Barry comes from. Maybe a bunch of berries grow there. Oh, I, I thought know. just the guy's name was Barry. No, Barry like blueberry. Oh, got it. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know where Barry comes from, but the Pomeroy comes from the landowners and, they originally got the land because um, in the 11th century, William the Conqueror uh, granted the land to a knight, um, and he was a Pomeroy ancestor. Mm. Um, he never ended up building a castle there, but like a cool, you know, 14, late 1400s, you know, in that time period, hundreds of years later, I guess. Uh, hundreds of years. Hundreds of years? Yeah. Yes. Uh, his family finally grew a castle. They um, grew a castle. They built one. They grew it with <laughs> bricks. It was made of berries, and they watered it every day <laughs> with their newfangled 14th century sprinkler system. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but if they did, that would have been like the very first topic I ever covered. <laughs> Okay, they grew it with their bare hands and a construction company. Um, <laughs> and they built it because at the time a war was coming. It was called the War of the Roses. Oh, yeah, I remember. I heard about it in AP did, Euro. Did you? Mm hmm. I, I don't remember I, anything, but I got a four on that exam, so I must have known something about it. You knew about it really well for a very short time for an extremely short time yeah. <laughs> for as long as it took you to study and answer the test yeah and, then, uh, and then that why away. why why keep it any longer than that you know <laughs> so uh the war of the roses was on its way and so i think the pomeroys probably at this point were like oh well we're gonna need a much stronger home than what we're mm. living in a safer home and so that's why they built the castle gotcha um and it is northeast of the actual village of Barry Pomeroy. And fun fact, the castle was uh, one of the last ones to ever be built with like the old school fortification features. Oh. So like a curtain wall and gun ports and a moat, which I feel I like we should ask. certainly bring back. I, Definitely. I, as a child, I always thought, oh, my dream house will absolutely, uh, without question, have a moat. Like, yeah, and a drawbridge, like, hello? Yeah, I never even thought it was like there was no possibility in my mind that that wouldn't happen yeah i was just like oh well one day i'll have a moat how's that right. going for you in your apartment in burbank <laughs> okay well I'm i have a moat of, i have a moat of cockroaches uh oh that yay <laughs> they say you cannot cross and that's how i can't get into my own room it's um, a moat against you i see <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so although the Pomeroys were once super powerful, um, they literally had a castle, they eventually lost the land in political conflict. Uh-oh. And the last of the two brothers um, and the Pomeroy family who lived in the castle, uh, let's just say they refused to surrender during a siege on the castle. Mm -hmm. And the way that they went out in a blaze of glory, if that's what you wanted to call it, um, they put on full armor. I'm so sorry. They blindfolded their horses. 
and they had them jump off the highest tower. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And oh my god, them and their horses died, and that was the end of the Pomeroy family at the castle. Why are listen? Why are men so dramatic? Like, truly, why, here's the thing. Why point. do women get accused? I mean, I'm talking in a very like binary, uh-huh. f- you know, historically. But like, why do women always get accused of being dramatic? And then you hear a story like this from hundreds of years ago, and you're like, I'm sorry. I'm the dramatic one. The woman would have brought the horse to the fanciest, coziest ranch farm to live out its days. And just and then, hide and be like, whatever, what's lost is lost, you know? And honestly, she might have stayed on the farm with the horse and been like, you know what? We're both safe here. That's what I'm That's saying. What would have happened probably. Let's start a berry know. farm. No one will know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hey, that's... I'm going to consider that the true factual history of I how wish that were the history. Barry got its name in the town. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, that that highest point off the highest tower is called Pomeroy's Leap. Whoa. I know they had it's so dramatic they had to also rename the tower. I they guess. didn't even just jump, they leaped. Okay. They <laughs> leapt. Uh, uh, gallivanted, I suppose. They, <laughs> they strutted across and leapt off. I mean, yeah. come on. I know. Um so anyway, that is how the Pomeroys ended up not having the, the castle Ugh, after that. It's her- it's gruesome. And I will say, thankfully slash hopefully, um, that story isn't 100% historically confirmed. So okay. I'm going to pretend at the very least the horses was um, dramatic flair for a story. I see. And so we can at least tell ourselves, you know, you know what? Maybe it's not true. We can they at least did actually go to a farm. Cling to that hope. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, and after that, in 19... Oh, no, not 19. That is significantly further into the future. <laughs> in 1547, uh, the property ended up going to Sir Edward Seymour, who was the first Duke of Somerset. Mm. Um, fun fact for any Broadway fans out there, if you have been listening to Six at all in the last few years, um, Sir Edward is, in fact, the brother to Jane Seymour, who <gasps> was uh, okay. Henry VIII's third wife who yeah. died during childbirth. She's the one in the song where she just goes, died. Just, <laughs> you know, <laughs> if anyone has listened to the song, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, okay, From that one note, they're like, oh, that song. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, instead of divorce, behead it. Yeah, she's yeah, died. Yeah, yeah. She's died. died. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, so Sir Edward, her brother, uh, also ended up making a lot of enemies, and by 1552, so that's like five years into owning the castle, he was imprisoned and executed, and the oh. castle was passed on to an heir of his. Oh, my God. So he had five hot years in this castle. Yeah. Um, his heir, I guess, was into interior design or something, and- Ooh decided this is a quote castles are out big mansions are in which (laughs) i'm confused at the difference but okay just to show my wealth status i don't know the difference between a castle and a mansion yeah i don't Um, either quite i mean i would assume a castle has a moat but like a mansion with a moat sounds plausible too so i'm not really sure and better i've and better i guess if you already have a moat why would you say that's out time to scrap it up you're right well, anyway, this heir had a very strong opinion, apparently, okay. about big mansions versus Trends. castles. Yeah. And decided to renovate the inside of the castle pretty much to a significant degree. They removed a whole bunch of stuff from the original I bet this structure. Is like, yeah, you know what this sounds like? This is like McMansion business, like this kind of nouveau riche, like, oh, I'm going to build, like, old stuff is gross. I'm going to build myself uh-huh. a brand new. I'm going to take out all the beautiful light fixtures and all this and I'm going to make it like all the fancy history. and brand new. Yeah, it sounds very McMansion-y. It's the it first sounds, McMansion. Sounds very Ty Pennington TLC's like trading <laughs> yes. extreme makeover or something. Yeah, and the, the they put race car beds with slides <laughs> in all of the rooms. Um, it's like, I heard you like tennis, so your floor is made of tennis yeah. ball carpet. <laughs> and you're go- like, your, all your clothes are now tennis whites, and you can't do anything <laughs> about it. Sorry. And also, you're, you have a tennis coach who just sits in your closet like a sleep paralysis <laughs> demon. He's always there. <laughs> He's always there, ready to practice your serve with you. Yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I I was gonna say something. Oh, fun fact! I don't know if I've talked about this on the show. Did you know? Do you, do you know what the original McMansions actually were? Like no, uh, Victorian houses 
were oh well f- okay hey perfect i know they were the original mcmansions because um people who were building them had c- recently come into money mm. and they were making these kind of elaborate gaudy like lots of colors lots of random like turrets where it doesn't make sense for a turret to dramatic. be yes very dramatic very showy and so mm-hmm. back then they were considered very tacky and like oh my gosh like they're just trying to show off their wealth and nowadays obviously victorian you know homes are like very traditional and historic so it's kind of an interesting little twist i love that tacky is like actually history (laughs) i know isn't that wild to think like people in victorian homes it used to be like oh what a tacky uh library you've built into that turret you know imagine if you told them like oh actually in 2022 people are going to spend top dollar on that they're, house. they would probably be like i know because i yeah. spent so much money to put this fucking turret in <sighs> well okay well uh, this basically i guess this guy was pro mcmansion but not pro mccastle so he <laughs> renovated the entire castle to be more modern but that included removing a bunch of the mm. stuff in it so i guess maybe the difference between a mansion and a castle is maybe one was tackier looking and like more dramatic (laughs) yeah i feel like that's that's not really um i feel like that's more subjective than anything but i guess so but if he's taking out a bunch of the like dramatic flair maybe he was one of those people who was like oh this is so tacky if i have to inherit this castle i'm gonna definitely make it look like i'm more modest so but didn't he say he wanted it to be more like okay well i guess he ended up building well no ty pennington was not in charge of the project so it definitely did not become more dramatic Um, he turned it into just a four-story mansion which i don't know what that fucking means i don't either um but apparently he he turned it um into an elizabethan mansion Ooh. um anyone who knows more about architecture than i do will maybe know the difference um but in the 1600 or no at on 1600 on the dot uh on 16 in 1600 his son ended up renovating the building again i figured it out what a castle is a this is according to quora a castle is a fortification a mansion or a manor is just a house so it's not so we took all the protection away well i think it's just like it's not meant to be it's meant to be a a home not like oh it's meant to protect you from warring troops you know what i mean okay like I think it it means more that um, you're you're using it as a as a house rather than uh, being fo- like focusing on the fortifications for safety purposes. I guess so, but I feel like if you already have a castle with all the bells and whistles, I feel like I would still live in it and be like, oh yeah, we don't use that anymore. But like, how cool for history? I feel like, uh, and, but a history I feel like from like fifty years ago isn't really like history yet. You're like, oh, we don't need moats anymore. That's so outdated. Like good point good we're point. not getting attacked but now yeah i wish i could get that moat back <laughs> okay fair enough fair enough i don't know uh, well so then after he i guess kind of downsized or at least um took out some of the the flair and the fortifications mm-hmm, mm-hmm. sad his son ends up renovating the building to make it even bigger which i think is so ironic because <laughs> like probably could have used some of those old walls you knocked down to make Aww. extra rooms but whatever um but the project was never finished. So I, it, in 1700, the property was abandoned. So 100 years after the last renovation, that which still never got finished, it is now also abandoned. Okay. Um, now, very quickly, time travel into the 1900s. And in 1977, um, English Heritage, which cares for a bunch of historic properties, they took over the castle and they are now still doing renovations. Okay, interesting. Sidebar about English Heritage. What do you know about their YouTube channel? Oh, what don't I know? Um, I don't um, know anything. I don't know. Anything. Okay. English Heritage. English Heritage, if you're listening, I'm probably your biggest fan. No. I, I when I saw this, uh, that English Heritage took it over, I was so excited to finally have a Sagu into talking about their YouTube channel because they fucking nailed it. So like, you know they, about this before this episode? I knew about I well I, when I was looking through the notes that said English Heritage took over. I was like, oh my gosh! Oh, but so, you knew you already knew about this. No, what, no, no, YouTube. So I see where you're coming from because oh. you would think English Heritage would have a YouTube channel where like they talk about all the like landmarks and properties that they're taking care of. I'm talking about a very specific 
playlist that they have on their YouTube channel because they have multiple playlists. They uh-huh. whoever is doing their like social media and like coming up with the ideas, well done because they have a whole playlist of like teaching you historically accurate um like makeup tutorials from Whoa. like hundreds of years ago. But you're saying they you knew an- about this before these notes. I knew about English Heritage, the YouTube channel. Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. That's all I want to know. Okay. Sorry. No, I thought you meant, oh, I knew about the castle through the no, YouTube no, no, channel. No, 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 no. Sorry. I just meant like you've heard of this YouTube channel. This is like a, a longstanding thing you've been waiting to educate me on. Longstanding. This gotcha. is, um, this is one of my like comfort YouTube channels. Oh, that really? I watch. Um, yeah. Sorry for the confusion there. But no, no I, it's no. one of the I'm, things. I'm thrilled to learn about I'm, this. <laughs> when I'm like, eating lunch and i need to like throw something on i like, love those moments where you're like i have the perfect thing it's one of the only things i go back and watch multiple times be and only wow. one of their playlists i appreciate their other playlists for existing i'm sure they're useful and wonderful to other people but this one playlist <laughs> is called the victorian way and uh, how fun is that so here's the thing about the victorian way they have a few types of videos or like different like hosts but there's one that i follow it's a like their cooking channel but it's the victorian way and it's okay it's filmed in one of the houses that they are preserving called the oddly n house (gasps) and uh i think it's filmed in there it's i think i would bet almost my life almost that it is filmed inside the house in their kitchen and the person who's like the chef and cooking for you I've never met someone more committed to a fucking character, but I don't know who this person is. Is it Mrs. Warwick? No, no, no. It's Mrs. Avis Crocum. Oh, Crocum. She, yes, I and see. And she's the head cook for um, Lord and Lady Braybrook at Stop the Oddly it. House. This is why I love shows like Downton Abbey, because you're like, whoa, I feel like I'm just transported. She, I don't know who she got her studying from on like what this character is probably like but i'm so convinced that mrs avis crocum is actually back from time traveler from the 1800s and she makes some of the um there's a dish before you say it say it with me on the count of three i don't know if i'm gonna say it right oh it might be a different different things okay okay let's say it on the count of three and it'll be really funny if they're different it will definitely be different because you can pronounce mine very easily. Okay. Just say yours. Just say yours. Uh, asparagus salad. Yes. Like okay. A- that's a wild one. I was about to say the meals that she makes are kind of outlandish, but yeah, for but, the time. But, but that's why it's funny because like the asparagus vase, like we learned all about that. And like this is a vegetable salad where like it's literally just adorned with all these asparagus because like now we know they were super hoity-toity back then. Well, that was celery. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but shit. Maybe, but maybe like the, shit you're totally right wrong fucking vegetable my bad but, okay the one i thought you were gonna say because the next sentence out of my mouth was gonna be the things that she cooks are things i would never eat but also like so interesting to watch one of them being pigeon pie oh, and no. she i they still make that in certain places literally she adorns it with the pigeon's feet i'm like absolutely and, not I'm like, Ms. Crocom, you didn't, you missed the mark today. You Ms. Know? <laughs> Crocom, you are something else. Um, But her videos, I'm just like, this is just like a, an episode now where I just rave about Mrs. Crocom. But she's amazing. I, I have never heard of this and now it's all I care about. I mean, this, this channel has 1.29 million subscribers. Like this yeah. is clearly a very and her popular. Vid- her videos, she always like has like a storyline to them. She's like... Mrs. Lady Braybrook is having ladies over to play cards later, and I know just the thing to make them, and then makes like asparagus salad, and I'm like, what? Oh my god! Um, I'm trying to think if there was one uh, where I watched uh, that I watched of like like um, it wasn't colonial. It was it was like plantation life on YouTube channel, mm-hmm. and it was like historical. And I I watched that a lot too when I was like doing my makeup or when I was like just eating dinner. And it was like this um, where they had enslaved people who, uh, you know, it, I mean, obviously in character, but say like this is what a day was like for, so an, for, for an enslaved person who worked as quote unquote the ladies made for a woman in early America. Just like really interesting, like little like slice of life yeah. But act it out. Um, and I, I just find it fascinating and like very educational, but also like, you know, really immersive. I just mm-hmm. love shit like that. 
Yeah, well, enjoy um, English Heritage, the Victorian I'm way going series. to. I just subscribed, so I'm ready. Lady Braybrook is... They're I mean, all of a sudden, they're going to be like, why did our numbers go skyrocket? <laughs> because... I mean, they already have 1.3 million subscribers. I don't know that we're going to add that much of a chunk, but... I have a hunch we'll put a little dent in there, especially at the Pigeon Pie video. That well, the Pigeon Pie video might be suddenly number one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway, all of that to say English Heritage also does many other things, including caring for hundreds of historic properties. Great. Um, including the Barry Pomeroy Castle. So... They are in the works to renovate the building and also on the side have a YouTube channel and you should watch it. Love it. Um, Okay. Now just for the ghosts. Okay. I'm Uh, I'm in. I'm in. (laughs) Sorry. I I burped right as you said that. And I was like, I feel like I should just not say anything. You know what I mean? I just like. Why? Because earlier when I said I burped, you went, ew. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Um, okay. So as for the ghosts. Woo! Okay. So they're uh, the two brothers that were just like, you know, bringing their horses to the afterlife with them. Oh, God. Um, visitors say that you can actually see ghostly riders on the castle grounds. Which which, which also implies the horses are there too, right? Mm-hmm. The ghost horses. It's like, God, I mean, you just trauma. Like, what a fucking traumatic way to die. No wonder there's a ghost horse. They're like, what just happened? Yeah. Oh, totally. Like a minute ago, I was like, fine. And now, well, it's so I sad. also, I also, like, we're putting that, those ghost reports with that story. But I feel like there were, there had to be more than two horses on the ground at some right. point. Right. So know? a ghostly rider could probably be anyone who used to travel around the grounds. Yeah. Yeah. Could have been anyone. So let's continue to pretend that maybe that didn't happen to the horses. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Um. So people, there was actually in 2019, there was um, one person named Chloe who visited with her friends and they heard what sounded like an animal and then started taking pictures and they got blurry forms of horses and riders. Whoa. Um, I have a picture of that <gasps> that I can send. Sweet. <gasps> oh, shit. Isn't that crazy? That's actually pretty fucking cool, dude. Yeah, you know what's wild to me is that the guy in the corner. We'll put this on. Um, we'll have Megan put this on Instagram, Megan. Um, <laughs> but what's wild to me is that the photo is that the dude in the photo is like completely non blurry. Like he's completely clear. It's like what's right yeah. next to him. So it's not like the whole photo is blurred. It's just like this one portion of it. Yeah, it also looks like it's happening over a bush or something, or yeah. like it looks like something that would be. <gasps> oh, good point. Like it feels like there would, like the bush would be damaged or something if there was really something there. And what's freaky to hear, like, oh, or what's freaky is that they heard an animal took a photo and, like, mm-hmm. there it yeah. is. Yeah, that's super Ooh. weird. Um, to like ha- already have some sort of evidence going on, and then it's almost like secondary proof. Oof, so. boy that's pretty cool um well also uh i i don't know but i'm gonna guess that that castle in the back of the picture one of those towers is probably the one that oh you know that um, that they didn't jump off of right that gotcha. is one of them is there gotcha. um, as for the other one uh there are also reports of the sounds of men shouting and heavy thuds and the sound of horses mm. um at the top of the tower. So. I don't like the thuds. That's not good. Yeah, I wonder if it's like the hooves. The falling? Like... Oh, oh, I thought it was the falling. It could be either. Oof. Um. So also there is uh, a tower there called the St. Margaret's Tower. And in the dungeons, apparently there is a, say it with me, lady in white. Um, oh, <laughs> I was like, an, an, um, what do they call it when they, a bricked, ghost. <laughs> they bricked in the nuns? I thought you were going to talk about bricking in. <laughs> no, like, no, 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 no. Oh. But there's oh, asparagus there's always, salad. There's oh, no. <laughs> just one lone plate left. Uh, oh. Nope, there's a lady in white or okay. called the white lady. All right. And the story goes that one of the Lord Pomeroy's, um, fun fact, there was like almost 20 Lord oh, Pomeroy's. Okay. But one of them. 20 uh, Lord Pomeroy's. <laughs> <laughs> and a plate of asparagus salad. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. I also just realized something. What? 10 Lords a leaping. Maybe all of them are Pomeroy's. I'm saying leaping off the tower. Oh, shit. Leaping. 
the leap. Oh, if no. it were two lords of leaping, I'd be real nervous. Yeah, how many lords of leaping is it? it? Could be. It could be a different number. Ten lords. It is, is it ten. ten lords? Yeah. All right. Well. <sighs> All right. I guess that makes Terrible. it better. Terrible. At least we we don't know where they're leaping to or from. You know. Hopefully, just from one foot to the next, <laughs> in a beautiful happy jig. <laughs> <laughs> Because their because <laughs> their pigeon pie was so tasty. Hey, yeah. <laughs> okay, so where on earth what? are we anymore? <laughs> are we? Okay. I don't know. I'm sorry. Oh right, right, right. Okay, how the white lady came to be. So, oh. uh, one of the leaping Lord Pomeroy's, uh, <laughs> he went on a crusade, which I like how that was probably just like a day at work for him. Yes. Um, oh. And he left his oldest da- daughter in charge while he was gone. And her name was Lady Eleanor. And Eleanor's sister, Lady Margaret, was engaged to a man. But here's mm. the thing. Both of them were in love with this man. <gasps> Both the sisters. Oh, mm-hmm. no. It's giving Hamilton, you know. Oh, for sure. For sure. So Eleanor got really jealous of Margaret for being engaged to this man. Mm. And while... The dad was away on his crusade. She locked Margaret away up in one of the towers for nearly 20 years. How long was dad Wait, 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 what? Hold How on. long was Mr. F- Crusader gone, you know, oh, leaving his daughter in charge? 20 freaking years? Maybe he died in, at the crusade. I was going to say, like, that's the only thing that makes sense. Well, that, by the way, that's a like a lucky call for her then like what was she gonna do when he came back unlock her well yeah she could probably just be like oh she was misbehaving and i was in charge so i guess so but like that did work out weirdly well for her at least that 20 years no one came looking yeah yeah um and of course in 20 years without food or water uh lady margaret died in the tower so um, 20 years without food or water so more like what three days Three days and then like an extra 20 years for like, Ooh, I don't know, just it's to double horrific. check. Um, and so that is Lady Margaret who died in the tower. Also, it is called St. Margaret's Tower. Um, wow. Lady Margaret is said to be the white lady. Okay. And she wanders the grounds in a white gown, often seen in St. Margaret's Tower, which is where she died. Mm. And a lot of people who see her are overcome with fear, anger, or despair. Oh. Um, those walking down that particular tower at night, um, if you're walking towards the dungeon, people will feel something brush past them like it passed them on the stairs. Oh. People have also seen her waving at them. Ooh. But when they f- see her waving, they feel evil. Like they feel e- an evil presence. Presence. <gasps> Wait, so, how weird is that? I wonder why that is. I know. I wonder if she's just got a bunch of pent up anger from what happened oh, to her. Maybe. I wonder if it's waving like hello or waving like help me, you know? Oh shit. Oh, I don't, I don't I know. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, maybe it's like a residual. Like both are bad because if someone just waved at you like this, I'd be it sounds very sinister to just wave hello as a yeah. ghost, but also waving for help is kind of terrible. But also yeah, what if it was waving frantically and then <sighs> If it's a residual haunt, that means that that already happened and yes. someone was walking by and she She's was just replaying the. Oof. Oy. That's pretty horrific. Well, there's also a blue lady instead of okay. a white lady. So, That's a fun twist. Uh, it's fun until I say this next sentence, oh. which is a trigger warning for you in particular because right. i know oh, you ha- excellent i'll turn it off for a few minutes okay thanks for the I- trigger warning about something i can't turn off uh-huh <laughs> I, mean, I really did just jump right in and say good luck um <laughs> it is a um we will rip it off like a band-aid but it is a true crime baby situation oh no okay just but we'll it. rip it off like a band-aid so um the blue lady was the daughter of a lord who was abused by her father um and she now wanders the grounds in a cape and a blue cape and a blue hood oh. um but the reason one of the ways she was abused is that she got pregnant with her own father's child <gasps> um and when the baby was born in a fit of trauma smothered the baby Oh God. Um, another version is that the father, her father, and I guess the baby's father, yeah. um, is the one who who killed the baby. Um Oh my god. The end. The end. Tragic fucking horrif- horrifying. 
Um, but nevertheless, uh, the blue lady is now said to haunt the grounds, mourning the baby, mourning her own trauma. Her tragedy, yeah. So um, she is said to be, you know, probably very sad and angry. So uh, the blue lady is probably not the one you want to bump into if she's... Yeah, talk about, like, feeling uh, the despair of somebody, you mm-hmm. know? I mean, oof. And the, no the, wonder. The weird, dark irony of being a ghost mourning another loss is just yeah. always that always gets me because it feels a little meta is the wrong word but it's the like your, yeah your death is in, never ending because of someone else's death yeah and, it's like a cyclical like you're stuck in this tragic loop almost yeah so Ugh. between the two of them uh the blue lady is mourning her baby and the white lady is i guess mourning herself and probably sure. really still probably has some vengeful a lot of very thing tragic about her sister. tragic ends yeah and uh and then of course let's throw like the animal cruelty into with the horses so sure 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 why not nice trifecta we might as well um, so allegedly the blue lady is heard crying at one of the towers but here's the thing because of her own um trauma with her father she really doesn't like men oh well and i don't fucking blame her yeah, so one of the things that she's known to do is cry for help at one of the towers, and if a man comes to help, she will try to push him over the ledge <gasps> of the tower. Oh, so, goodness. As she should. No, I'm, I'm, I don't know. <laughs> no, no, but like, yeah, I mean, it's hard to, yeah, I can see why that would be the instinctual. Yeah, I hope nobody gets actually all. pushed off the tower, obviously, but I can I, see why that would uh, be the instinct, you know. I would definitely, I would hope that... um Men are warned that, like, if you hear a cry, maybe don't go wandering. Yeah, like, maybe just stay down here. Have yeah. a cup of tea. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know if there's actually been a successful death from a ghost. I feel like we would have heard about that. Yeah, I agree. But that is supposedly what she's up to. And okay. that's it. So um, it happens most at St. Margaret's Tower, which I've already mentioned. And fun fact, um, St. Margaret is the patron saint of expectant mothers and difficult births. <gasps> wow. So what are the odds that the blue lady is up there? I didn't know that. Um, so uh, now to get into like, well, let me just see where this takes us. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, you're like, I don't want to commit before I really know. <laughs> I don't. So in Victorian England, uh, there was this movement to romanticize um, like ruins and ghosts and gothics and Celtic ruins and ghosts. Right. Um but when tourists started flocking to these sites, a lot of them didn't have like enough stories to make a whole tour and uh, like a whole ghost tour, which I love that there were ghost tours back then. Yeah. Like, which is so fun. Like, you know, we were on all those tours yeah. in a past life. <laughs> I would love to know what the first ghost tour was. Ooh. I'm, sure, I'm sure it's a quick Google, but I, I feel like done it was it. the guy who did the tizzy wizzy. He was like, I got a ghost tour <laughs> for you. I made it up, but actually, I'll... that's a great point, right? Like yeah. he's like, I got one. It's not real, but here we go. <laughs> great point. By the way, someone um at one of our shows just made us tizzy wizzies. Um, yes, and somebody made this too, and I I put the card somewhere, but this is um Aww. this is I know, and and I think it's another uh, tizzy wizzy. Yeah, they they bought the hedgehog uh pattern crochet pattern and then added wings. Oh, which I saw, so and, and eyebrows and then of course they made zandy one since he loves hedgehogs but without the wings um and alexander looked at this and was like what is that i was like it god the ultimate hedgehog yeah <laughs> take a hike zandy take a i hike. feel like for someone who loves hedgehogs we the tizzy wizzy is not far that would be his favorite lore i'd imagine yeah i was gonna say he better get on board because like he, we're we're nailing it with like his interests i mean very on brand for him but yeah i'll uh i'll find the name of the person who made it later i have it on a card but um yeah we've gotten some fun tizzy wizzy merch the ornaments are so cute mm-hmm. love it love it uh i don't know how oh sorry my cardiologist is calling me yeah yeah he's like i hear that your heart i, I can sense your heart is uh not doing too hot today <laughs> yeah something's not right something's not right okay so let me try that again so in victorian england there was a movement to romanticize ruins and ghosts and thus tourists started coming in to see these sites um but the guides had to start making up these stories so that they That's could sell a hilarious ghost by tour. the way 
Yeah. I, I think so too. I, <laughs> you know, they had to sit together and be like, what are we going to say? Like, what are we even, what can we possibly have to say? So I wonder if any of the stories that I just told were just concocted forever ago and now we'd have no proof about them. That's a great or not existing. point. How much of it, Hmm. Yeah. Intriguing. How much of it is real? How much of it is? I don't know. Well, don't know. Pa- uh, unfortunately, I think it was either the white lady or the blue lady. I think it was the white lady um, that maybe can be more confirmed because uh, there is one story that people take particular interest in because a doctor who was visiting uh so like someone who's more logical and probably more skeptical he said no 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 i fucking saw something okay so this was in the late 1800s his name was well he was a doctor but he was also called sir walter farquhar so i'm like are you sir doctor or dr sir i don't know guy from shrek not farquad farquhar (laughs) Close enough. Close, close. (laughs) But yeah, I don't know which title to go with first. I feel like it would be, because like you say, Professor Doctor. So maybe Sir Doctor. Oh, okay. Walter Farquhar. Um, And he published a memoir and in it included his his experience at the Barry Pomeroy Castle, where Mm -hmm. he um, was asked to visit because the caretaker on the grounds, his wife was really sick. And so as a doctor he came on over and while he was waiting to see the wife he saw the white lady in the room in the room with him Uh oh and she looked really stressed and she was wringing her hands and she walked up the steps and looked at him and then vanished which i feel like if you're about to go see a sick person and then all of a sudden ghosts are showing up that's yeah especially like those hospital stories you hear about like when people are about to die all of a sudden people from the other side start visiting visit Mm-hmm. oh you just gave me chills Eesh. well sure enough he talks to the caretaker and says i just saw this ghost and the caretaker was like oh well she's actually a death omen to the family and the next day his wife died so you were 100 percent right like she visited and it's sort of like oh no she knows a death is coming oh my god which is if that's all true it's interesting that when you're on your way out it's not just ghosts that you know that are visiting it's just whoever happens to be like in proximity is easier yeah. to see because I feel like usually it is a family like member, or family something. or or yeah, yeah, like a partner who's passed or a pet. Yeah, but to know that it could just be like a ghost that happens to just like live in the house is also Ooh. easier to access. Yeah, that's very creepy. Well, I don't like the fact that I'm now seeing ghosts in my house. Let's just ignore that fact. Let's ignore it. Don't get sick anytime okay. soon, please. I'll try. Um, I've been trying for three years, so I'll continue. On. Yeah. You know, okay. Great. Continue great point, trying. Great point. Um, another ghost, uh, there's apparently another lady in white who we don't think is Lady Margaret, but possibly a Pomeroy daughter um, who was very, very cruel to people. And thus she's just doomed and banished she, to and live on Earth. And she's not the one that locked the other one in. The, it's not Eleanor. Yeah, it, right? You would think. But she it's sounds pretty damn not. cruel. The fact that so many cruel people have lived here is kind yes, of crazy. It, I mean, I guess, what do you expect in like a old timey castle where they probably didn't where they threw horses off the top i imagine they weren't yeah. necessarily the nicest people a lot of weird energy going on yeah um, some people claim that this lady in white will actually lure you to unsafe places uh and on the castle grounds hoping to cause accidents oh my god that's really <laughs> fucking evil can you imagine just doing like a like a plain old ghost hunt here and then all of a sudden like you just start straying i'd be so nervous it it would it like it's very rare for me to be like oh i wouldn't want to do a ghost tour somewhere but i'm like i don't know if i'm prepared for this kind of energy you would would just have to like all leash up like just have like fanny packs that connect to each other and stay in a line you know oh my (laughs) god you'd have to like do the the like preschoolers like hold the rope yeah (laughs) there's another ghost here called the smiling cavalier uh uh who is a man dressed in 17th century cavalier clothing and he smiles and walks around uh he's walking toward the village apparently when you see him okay but what's what's interesting because we talk about the blueprint theory a lot of like oh well maybe you know he's just walking around in a room that doesn't exist anymore to us but to him it existed well he is walking on a path that used to exist and the path used to be on raised ground but since so he is he so floating? It looks like he's floating. Ah, okay, that's so fun. Isn't that crazy? So what like, a fun, like uh, weird time hack. I love it. 
I wonder if that means that if you die on a plane, are you just always in the sky? Or you are know? you going like this? Oh, die on the plane. I thought you meant the plane crashed because I was oh, like, shit. well, that's horrifying. But oh, oh, but I yeah, see. Like, if, if you are floating on ground that no longer but, exists but, there. But do you think that's where, okay, here, let me let me put it this way. Do you think he died while doing that walk or did he just do that walk so often that as a ghost, that's what he haunts? Because then it would mm. probably be the pilot who was haunting the sky because he just lived his life flying airplanes. So when he dies, oh, shit. even at, on the ground, maybe he spends his days up in the sky like flying an airplane plane you know luckily i've never encountered a haunted plane so i don't oh, know God. me neither but can you imagine being the flight attendant on a haunted plane and like there's some so like what do you what do you even do like that uh, would honestly does anybody have that story because email us <laughs> i don't know why you would have that story but like i feel like well, so one of you must have I think a that story would be, that would be the toughest listeners episode request uh, to date. poor eva would be like <laughs> really in pain doing that one but but if we get some please let you us you mean know. in plain but- <laughs> i'm so sorry okay well Me too. <laughs> anyway interesting you know addition to the blueprint theory of like oh that includes like level like elevation yes you know? that is very interesting and very he does seem to be an intelligent spirit too because he will react to you looking at him and he'll smile at oh. you thus the smiling cavalier and he'll tell you he's on his way to the pub i don't oh well that's nice does he invite you along or does he just give you an update i don't know i haven't been there but i feel like i would like to I wonder if he vanishes right away or can you get a quick sentence in there? Could you say like, oh, can I come with you? Or yeah, why are yeah, you yeah. floating? Have a drink for me. Or why are you all the way up there? <laughs> yeah. So, so many questions. Anyway, that's the Smiling Cavalier, which I was worried he was going to be spooky with he the name sounds Smiling creepy. Cavalier. It sounds yeah. creepy for sure. So so far, he seems like the one that I want, especially because he's walking away from the castle. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I love that for him. And he's just on his, minding his own business, getting a, getting a pint, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um. Okay, so here's another dark one. Uh, but in the kitchen, there was a nine-year-old uh, named Isabella. Mm. She was a servant. I don't know if she was an enslaved person. I, I hear servant and I wonder what the definition is. Sure, exactly. Especially because she was allegedly the illegitimate daughter of a Pomeroy nobleman. Oh, ex- just, so just excellent. Just wonderful. You tell me what you think yeah um I, I won't i'm just gonna let and by you can... nine-year-old servant let's just call it an enslaved person yeah a child laborer yeah yeah uh-huh um well she was in the kitchen and she watched her mom getting attacked by noblemen oh cool great excellent so additional trauma and Jesus. she tried she tried to fight them off <gasps> but she couldn't and her and her mother died <gasps> and now Isabella is still seen walking around the kitchen and has even followed people home, especially if you're a friendly visitor, because she's trying to find probably oh, a safer place. So, oh, I um, know. that's I know. fucking sad. And it's a, just a really dark story in general. So, um, the yeah, the kitchen, whole the whole of it, is, the whole is of it, sad. yeah. Um, and anyway, of those ghosts, I will say uh, many of the spirits in the castle are officially endorsed by English Heritage. And um, visitors can go on guided ghost tours of the castle, all that good stuff. That's cool. Um, if English Heritage does it, I believe it. If English Heritage wants to hire us as their ghost hunters, I would please, like to. Please, pretty please. And if I could go with Mrs. Avis Crunkham, um, to, <laughs> and if I no. could ghost hunt with her in the kitchen of the Oddly Un House, I would lose my mind. Do you think she's going to ghost hunt? I don't think so. She has a lot of pigeon pies to bake, but I think like I would go with you and I'd be like, wait a second, where did M go? And I would find you in the fucking kitchen, like taste testing all the lemon tarts. This is an official request. If anyone knows the woman who plays please. Mrs. Crocom, or if anyone knows someone who works uh at english heritage i would do anything to go on the oddly unhouse preferably with Please. mrs Croco. where is it oh it's did you tell me already Eng- england I think. right sure yeah <laughs> but I don't, you don't know where okay. i don't know where i just know it's called the oddly unhouse and i would get on a plane tomorrow um, okay so if you're if you're out there however this needs to get spread please let them know i am very interested spread the word and as you said earlier especially because zach bagans hasn't you know, yeah we might so. as well get on it right yeah 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 Okay, so the last fun fact I'm going to throw at you is that there is a website by a man named Simon Day, uh, and he has compiled many ghost sightings from Barry Pomeroy um, on his site. Um, okay. He even says like he does he did not believe in ghosts beforehand, but um, a quote from him is, "I'm a very mature person, 
and worked for the Devon and Cornwall police as a special constable for nine years. I don't drink a and I don't take drugs. you say. And I am very wary of stories by nature. I've And so he's like just trying to like give you his resume of how like in his right mind he is. And how he, he how saying, much he hates this podcast. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, I've only uh, on this website, I've only listed the sightings I have seen that I have been witnessed by others. And I see no point claiming something I've seen alone because he wow. feels like he'll be, you know, gaslit into it not being true. Sure. So um, on his site, he claims that, interestingly, the kitchen where nine year old Isabella was, the kitchen feels most evil and someone has knocked him over in there. And oh. he's even had his change fall out of his pocket and vanish before his eyes. Oh, weird. And after that, they heard a terrible scream. And he <gasps> looked up and saw a hammer falling from the sky about oh. to hit him. Oh. He dove out of the way and the hammer landed so intensely that it embedded itself in the ground. What is that so, like, about? Had, it not, had he not dodged it, he would be gonzo, basically. How weird is that? I'm like, a hammer out of the sky is this fucking Thor? What hap- What are yeah. you talking about? <laughs> it's supposed to be a horse. And I like how he's like, no wonder he has that whole like CV now of like, this is how logical of a person uh, yeah. I am. And a hammer fell out of the sky after my pocket change vanished. Um, so anyway, he also claims uh, that uh, there was another time he was at the castle and him and a group of almost 20 people saw an old woman standing at the top of the St. Margaret's Tower And this was 10 minutes before 1 a.m. And without her opening her mouth, they all still heard her say, beware of the hour. (gasps) And 10 minutes minutes later at 1 a.m. sharp, they heard a terrible shriek and the castle started, the castle gate started to shake by itself. Whoa. He also has um, outlined instructions on the website of how you have your best chance at seeing a ghost there. Um, I will read them now. Okay, uh, okay. I'm taking notes. Some of them are maybe I think they could be used elsewhere. I think he was making it especially for the castle, but I feel like most of them are They're pretty universal. Still good. Yeah. Okay. So one is don't have too many people in your group, two to four people max. Um, I guess because the smaller the group, the more vulnerable you are. Yeah. Uh for some reason it says never go inside because once you or someone else has been inside, you won't see a ghost. I don't know what that Wait, means. what? He's that like, feels... the hammers fall out here, not in there. <laughs> right. He was like, I was in the kitchen and my pocket change vanished, but don't you dare go inside because you won't see a ghost. That's so weird. I don't get it. Okay. That's the only one that doesn't track for me. Okay. Because um, so far I'm like one for two, I yeah. guess. <laughs> uh, the other one is you have a better chance of seeing a ghost if you walk up the rear path versus the main road. Um, the other one is don't use a light or flash camera. I will attest to this too, is don't use a light or flash camera until it's like, unless it's your last thing you're doing before you leave, because the lights and the sounds will scare the ghosts away. Yeah. I feel like that could be startling, like a bright flash of light. Yeah. So usually that's your, the last thing you do. Okay. At least that's the last thing I would do. Um, apparently in this castle, the cafe, which didn't know there was one, the cafe is the best spot to stand and case you want to see a ghost okay. which is interesting i sure. guess i'm the ghost in this scenario i was gonna because say that's where i will be too so you know if you really want your best chance at seeing me as a ghost go stand at a um grocery shop deli section and yeah. <laughs> the magic words are boar's head roast beef um uh so another thing is to be respectful of the place and to not make jokes about the ghost of the castle which okay. is f- uh, fair uh, fair they they were people real people Another one that's probably less, it's probably more difficult to do, but um, bring a dog or a pet with you because they can sense things that you can't. Happily, I would love to bring Gio with me. He would take off into the night. He would never come back, but you know what I mean? He would at least, uh, he would at least love the cafe. (laughs) Yeah. Also, (laughs) Gio's castle, that's the, isn't that the name of your, the Wi-Fi or something? That's, uh, I think that's our apartment Wi-Fi. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Geo's Castle. So, hey. I think so. I think so. Unless it's changed. Uh, the red candle. Uh, you have to bring a red candle, apparently. Um, and he even says. A red candle? I don't know that one. That was Alexa. Did you hear her? No. She went, I don't know that one. And I went, girl, I don't either. I don't either. Um, 
Oh, I don't know what I said that set her off, but okay. a red candle. Uh, yeah. He said, bring a red candle if you can, but then even explains it as this raises the success rate a little bit, but I have no idea why. <laughs> I was like, you know, sometimes I feel like this guy's just filling up a word count, you know, I'm like, I feel like about? there's a chance you actually just had a ghost experience and happened to be holding a red candle that one time. And Which, like, to be fair. Okay. Yeah. But if like, that's true. I just feel like who invented this rule and did anybody actually have success with it? Yeah, I don't know. If don't you know. happen to live near this castle, maybe go bring a red candle over there. But also, like, here's the situation. Bring a red candle, and then it says, once you reach the castle, blow out the candle, and you might see something. That's what? all very vague to me. So walk towards the castle with the candle lit. Then as you're approaching the castle, <sighs> blow it out, and you might see something. It seems I feel very like you, convoluted. It seems very, like, whether without the candle, you you might see something. You also might not, with or without the candle. And we don't know why the end yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah i do appreciate that he said i have no idea why. at least like, he's at, being honest yeah at least you're being upfront about that mm -hmm. um he also mentions as just like a little caveat that like if you hear screaming don't take that super literally as a ghost because there are a lot of foxes in the area oh, oh, and oh, 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 oh. fox screams sound like human screams um, and so, you know, if you hear screams, you're welcome to be scared, but also know that there is probably a rational debunking. To right. That. There are a lot of uh, animals whose screams are very human like and very freaky. Mm hmm. Uh, they also said uh, on the website that people have witnessed a large dog in the halls and on the grounds, but will eventually vanish once it's seen you. OK, um, I, I like that. And uh, people report seeing the cane bearer, who is a woman dressed in rags who carries dried plants like cane. Oh, OK. For, for like weaving baskets. And sometimes if she doesn't like you, she will poke you with her canes. <laughs> um, but <laughs> Good another, for her. <laughs> and it ranges because sometimes she'll poke you with the canes and sometimes she will follow you home temporarily. So uh, okay. no, thanks. no and thanks. And then there's a note that she's harmless. And I'm like, I don't know about that. Sounds but, like maybe she's not. Right. Just a thought. Uh, other visitors have seen a medieval guard by the ramparts and he will, he's holding a light. He will creepily smile at you and he will vanish. Excellent. And then people have seen the spirits of other guards pacing uh, the grounds and an old gardener has been seen cutting the grass with a scythe who then vanishes. Oh, to be fair, I'm glad he's cutting the grass, but like a man holding a scythe is like right. the last thing I want to see vanish in front of my eye. Well, I actually I'm thrilled he vanishes as well. If he stayed there, I think I'd be more nervous, but I think my fear is he'd vanish just to reappear right behind e me. Exactly. Like yeah. I don't want to I, I don't I don't want I want him in my eyesight. I don't want him vanishing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you <sighs> stay right there. Uh and all that to say the castle still offers day tours uh, on English Heritage's website and also a uh, second shout out to go check out their YouTube channel because I'm, I'm a so big fan. excited about the YouTube channel. <laughs> And that is the Barry Pomeroy Castle. Wow. And that was a really, 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 really good one. Oh, thank you. I, I was worried. I try to keep a time limit for myself. No, and no. I feel like I went over this time. No, no, so. no, no, no. I fucking loved it. I just love the ones where it's like they have such a storied history. And so it makes sense why there's so many ghosts, you know? Yeah. No, I, I love I those. I really like this one. I feel like there was a lot of variety to it. Yes. And a lot of like creepy history which i love too yeah i feel like there's a lot of places i cover where it's like oh there were footsteps and knocking and i'm like i i feel bad when i'm reporting it because i'm like i feel like other people are like oh it's the same story over and over and it's like i can't control that i like trust me i also want there to be some variety to this i a lot of haunts are just footsteps and knocking i don't know what to tell you yeah but this one this one really i felt like was a it was refreshing had, it was uh, it had quite a variety yeah oh i loved it Well, uh, I have a story for you today. This is the story of Stacy Castor, and it is a doozy woozy, okay? Okay. Stacy so, Castor with a T? Uh, yes, Castor. So C A S T O R. Stacy Castor. Um, so her maiden name was Stacy Daniels. She was born July 24th, 1967, in New York State, and she had one brother and a sister. When she was 17 uh, and a high school senior in 1985, uh, she was six feet tall. She was outgoing. Uh, she was on the yearbook and prom planning committees, just like a very sociable, 
um, fun loving gal. And lit up a room. Lit up her, her smile, lit up a room. You yeah. get the idea. Uh, and while she was a senior during this time, she met a man named Michael Wallace. So okay. this Michael Wallace, he had been born in 1967. So he was um, six years older than her. He was 24 when they met. And he was also kind of like the life of the party type. Uh, Stacy was pretty quickly drawn to him. Uh, and the two of them got very close very quickly. Mm. Mike had actually already been married to his high school sweetheart, Nancy, who coincidentally was Stacy's third cousin. <laughs> Hang on so, now. Okay. Hold on, so so Stacy uh, met this dude. Mm-hmm. And she's like, wow, this guy's great. And he's like, you know, I am divorced. I actually was, I used to be married to your third cousin. Oh, okay. Okay. And she was my high school sweetheart. And high school sweetheart. Okay. I, I'm just getting my gargoyles ready for, I... the, for the family tree. That's all. <laughs> to, 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 to For a visual aid. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So Stacy's uh, new boy, her new BF, <laughs> okay. her guy, her going boyf. steady. That he used to be married to her third cousin. Got it. The gargoyles are placed properly. They are waiting and ready. Got it. Okay, They're good. They're ready. Um, so Nancy, for what it's worth, and her uh, third cousin did not know herself very, not know each other very well. So if you need to, you can separate the gargoyles by like a millimeter. I don't, I don't think anyone really knows who their third cousin is. I, I, I certainly don't. Uh, yeah. I, you know, the, what's that website? 23 and Me tells me I have some, but I don't really know what they are. We definitely have some, mean. but I, I don't think I would. I don't even know the relationship that a third cousin is. I don't I know either. A, I know a second cousin and I know cousins once removed, but I don't know third cousins. I don't know the difference between once removed or second. Oh. Do you want me to teach you? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, I didn't want to interrupt you again. No, no, time. please tell me. Um, I, so you and what's a cousin's name of yours? uh oh my god what's a cousin's name i have so many <laughs> pick one bill i don't know <laughs> august okay august if you in august since your cousins if you have kids and august has kids they will be second cousins okay so my cousin's kids mm -hmm. and, and my kids are second cousins yeah so it's when your parents are cousins yes okay got your second cousin uh but once removed would be your relationship with August kids is they would be, you would be oh. first cousins once removed. So one generation different. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you're so smart. And then it, 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 I don't totally, I wouldn't be able to verbalize it, but if you see it on a list, if it shows, yeah. shows like first cousins, second cousins, third cousins. So I guess maybe third cousins are your parents are second cousins. Oh, which Whoa. feels genetically so separate like i feel like that's not that weird if you're like yeah i feel like that's so far away like a third if i found out i was dating someone who was also dating my third cousin it's so removed yeah i, think I feel I'd like be that fine. wouldn't phase me that much especially if i didn't really know them yeah so i guess third cousins are when your grandparents are cousins oh because okay, wow second... yeah that that is quite a quite a yeah. leap yeah. Okay. Yeah. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Okay. Wow. Yeah, um, yeah. You're so smart. I like my brain just can't <laughs> comprehend stuff like this. You know. I I I thank you, but it's that's as far as it goes. So <laughs> I don't have any it's more in the far. arsenal. I was very stuck. I was stuck at first cousins. That was about as far as my knowledge went. So thank gotcha. you. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Cool. Um. So anyway, uh, they he had been uh, married to his high school sweetheart, who happened to be Nancy's third cousin, but the women didn't really know each other, and. Uh, Nancy, the third cousin, had been pregnant when she married Mike, but not with Mike's baby. So with a different baby, uh, with a different baby, with a different man's baby. <laughs> uh, and then they had their own son together as well when they got married. But mm -hmm. their marriage didn't last long. Uh, Nancy claimed that Mike abused her and he had been to jail for drinking and driving. So that relationship kind of imploded and they got divorced. And now Mike and Stacy were together. Got it. So a lot had happened. Stacy's like 17. A lot has happened in this guy's life before before she yeah. came into the picture. Um, I don't have as, enough gargoyles. Prom so. committee. Yeah. <laughs> so Stacy and Mike dated for a few years. Um, but when Stacy at age 19 found out she was pregnant, unfortunately, Mike made it really clear he did not want to start another family. And so he just up and left her. Yikes. Oy. 
Stacy um, gave birth to her first daughter, Ashley, in 1988. And friends considered Stacy resilient, single mother. She basically did it all to provide for her daughter. And according to Stacy, in her own words, quote, I knew from that moment on my whole reason for being here was to take care of her. And Stacy considered Ashley her best friend. Ashley was her life. Ashley was everything to her. Mm. But eventually, plot twist, Mike comes back and oh marries Stacy in April of 1990. I guess uh, the grass was not greener wherever he was uh, adventuring to. Sure. So he came back. And according to Stacy, Mike was larger than life. If you needed something that Mike had, he would give it to you. Oh, okay. So Mike is this larger than life guy. He comes back into the picture. He marries Stacy. Now they're together. Uh, and interestingly enough, Stacy also got along with her third cousin, Nancy, a.k.a. Mike's ex-wife. Sure. So all three of them, all three gargoyles, sometimes spent holidays together <laughs> with the baby gargoyles, with all their children. <laughs> the gargolettes. <laughs> the gargolettes. <laughs> <laughs> Introducing the world famous gargolettes. Uh so if they're third cousins, then what are their children? Third fourth? cousins. They're third cousins, and then they have kids. Yeah, I imagine they'd be fourth cousins. Wow. I'm learning so much. I'm probably, anyone who like knows how a family tree works better than me is probably like, no! Honestly, but- I'm, I'm baffled that you even know this, because my brain, I just never understood. I'm always doing my ancestry stuff. But I, wow. I do, it, I mean, it makes sense that like, if your parents are first cousins... Their kids would be second cousins. Yes, it, would it make totally sense. Totally that it makes keeps sense. going down the line. So yeah, makes total sense. I'd okay. say they're fourth cousins. Interesting. Okay, so all the cousins had, um, you know, holidays together, that kind of thing, which I think is really lovely. You know, they yeah. all got along. So Nancy, uh, the ex, the third cousin, was amazed by Stacy's dynamic with Mike because remember Nancy had, you know, uh, said Mike was abusive. Um, would drink and drive, was just a very toxic relationship. And Mm. so she was just shocked to see that Mike, who was once abusive to her, seemed to follow Stacy's lead in their marriage. So Nancy thought Stacy was just a a smart woman. She was able to stand up for herself, get things done. Um, And in, in, mm, I don't know how else to put it, but they basically said, uh, wow, I can't believe Stacy was able to tame him and like keep him like from being this horrible dude that i married you know what i mean right 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 um you know for lack of a better term so still stacy later recalled that mike was uh not you know back to a hundred percent he struggled with drug abuse and excessive drinking still even during the second marriage um but according to mike's sister he was just someone who tended to go over the limits on everything but was still a good soul uh and a good man so you know people tried to give him the benefit of the doubt i guess Sure. Both parents worked to support their little family. Mike worked as a mechanic and Stacy worked in ambulance dispatch. And in 1991, Stacy and Mike welcomed their second daughter into the world, whose name was Bree. Okay. And so this makes me a little bit sad. Um, Mike seemed pretty distant with his first daughter, Ashley. Um, if you'll recall, he didn't want to start a family and he left when uh, Stacy became pregnant. Sure. So he never really, I guess, connected with uh, Ashley. But when Brie was born, he doted on her, like adored mm. her. And so, it, you know, makes me a little bit sad. Um, yeah. It was very obvious he had a favorite child. Uh, no one really understood why. Um, They're both his not that this makes it better or worse, but they were both his blood children, right? Correct. Like yes. Both biologically I same like parents. You, I feel like you see that a lot with like the trope of like, like step parents right. or something. Right. Like, right. Right. Even or though half it's half yeah. sibling. Yeah. So, okay. Um, weird. That's yeah. So weird. And I, I, I wonder, yeah, I, you know, it's, I guess people just couldn't really figure out, put their finger on why, but maybe it was because he had said he didn't want a child and so held resentment toward her. Who knows? Sure. Um, but yeah, so when Brie was born, he was like head over heels um, in love with with having her. So Stacy and Mike, despite um, having, quote unquote, tamed him, yikes, uh, they struggled in their marriage. They had very different work schedules. They rarely saw each other. And like I said, Mike was also struggling with addiction and Stacy just overall was not happy. Um, in 1999, she told a friend that she was planning to divorce Mike. So here we go. She okay. planned to wait. She told the friend, I'm going to wait till after the holidays so uh, all the garglets can enjoy their Christmas <laughs> Christmas morning together in a happy, 
family um and the year wraps up normally but then you know when the holidays are over this is when i'm going to let him know that i'd like to file for divorce sure unfortunately right around this time mike started to get really sick oh so shit. he went to the doctor for um his symptoms he told the doctor he felt drunk and dizzy even when he was sober um he his daughter later recalled he was having a hard time walking and he was having a hard time talking but doctors Ooh. no matter what they tested they couldn't figure out exactly what was wrong with him uh ashley who was 12 at the time uh this was january 11 2000 12 year old ashley came home and saw her dad on the couch acting kind of strange and making funny faces this mm. is talk about fucking trauma in the I making i was gonna say he reached an arm into the air and then dropped it. And <gasps> Ashley didn't understand what was happening, but she was supposed to be out getting brief from school. So she left and thought yeah. he was just being silly. Or like maybe having one of his like episodes or something where he was just kind of dizzy or. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So Ooh. she thought, OK, well, I'll just leave him on the couch. And she went to pick up her sister. But when she got home with Bree and again, she's only 12. Like how on oh earth was she God. supposed to know? Um, Stacy had found Mike unresponsive on the couch and had called 911. Uh, they took him to the hospital by ambulance and he was pronounced dead of a heart attack. <gasps> oh, very, no. very talk about the trauma, very traumatic. And, uh, you know, for years, Ashley struggled with the guilt of this. She wondered if Mike would have lived if she'd called an ambulance. But again, mm. she was 12 years old. She didn't realize what was happening. Um, you know, tormented oh herself God. over the what if, like, what if I had done something? What if I had, you know, stayed? So just very, oh very tragic um, and traumatic experience. And when this happened, this was also very shocking to people who knew the family. Um, friends and family were totally grief stricken. Uh, Mike was a pretty healthy dude other than, you know, he did have some addiction issues. But uh, he did have this history with alcohol and drug abuse so when doctors you know looked at his records they were like well a number of things can happen if you have if you're if you're alcohol dependent if you're drug dependent um and so they felt pretty confident that he didn't require an autopsy because of this oh, so okay mike's siblings asked stacy to request an autopsy anyway just for closure just to see if there was something wrong um another argument for this was that maybe if he had a genetic heart condition they could tell from the autopsy and this could help uh, Stacy's daughters to be checked out and, um, you know, keep their health record clean. But Stacy refused to uh, go through with the autopsy, didn't want to do it. Um, and so instead, she collected uh, $55,000 from Mike's life insurance and was able to pay for the funeral, pay off some bills. And then she took uh, her two daughters, Ashley and Bree, to Disney World. Mm. Okay. Okay. So at the funeral, Stacy was very stoic. She told people she wanted to act like a mother not a widow and people were impressed by her strength the way she took care of her daughters in the wake of tragedy and acted like kind of a pillar of strength for them uh, they settled back into their pretty typical routine their pretty typical lives um, and months later stacy met a new man named david castor okay so David Castor, he had been born in 1957, was about 10 years older than Stacy. This didn't bother her in the slightest. Um, they married in August of 2003, and Stacy took his last name, which is why she's now known as Stacy Castor. Uh, so according to Stacy, David was very conscientious, very work-driven, very into the outdoors. He had snowmobiles and four-wheelers and a boat, uh, and she considered him support and strength and security. That's like what she saw in this new new man she was seeing. Uh, David himself had an adult son from a previous marriage, and Stacy's daughters uh, were not thrilled about this. These two getting together. I mean, I imagine also like they're still grieving the loss of their dad and all sure. that. So I imagine it's a very loaded time. Um, but for what it's worth, apparently uh, David was difficult with the kids. Um, he expected them to do everything he said without question, and uh, you know being teenagers or whatever they tended to rebel against this a little bit or question yeah. question the new rules that their stepdad was making um and so there was a lot of tension uh between them and their stepdad so august 22nd 2005 stacy called 911 she said her husband david never showed up for work and she had spoken to him the day before at 5 a.m 
just before he had locked her out of their bedroom and remained inside the bedroom silently. What? Okay. So they were like, elaborate, please. Uh, yeah. When and I taking was taking like, a really good nap. Elaborate. Like, What's the situation? <laughs> oh, good question. Let me tell you. Well, Stacy said David got upset about something and locked himself in the room with a bottle of SoCo, Southern Comfort. Oh. So she told her friend Danny that she had pressed her ear to the door and heard David sleeping and then told detectives that David must have been sleeping off whatever had upset him. So she just let him be in the room. But the next day, you know, he didn't go to work and she was locked out of the bedroom. So she called 911. When police came and knocked the bedroom door down, David actually was not sleeping. He was dead. Oh, shit. Okay. Uh, Apparently by suicide. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Yes. So David's father had recently passed and Stacy said the grief must have driven him over the edge. Um, That being said, David's ex-wife and the mother of his son, Janice, was like, bullshit. I call bullshit. She said there is no way in hell that this man would have died by suicide. This is just not, it's not in the cards. So this Mm. is where we're getting some, some red flags from other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's even more shocking is remember he had this this ex wife Janice and their son, their grown son. Right. Uh, turns out after he passed, they found out that uh, David's will left everything to Stacy and her daughters and nothing for the son. Oh fuck that! Yeah, whom also he dearly loved and by the way was very close with. So it's not like they were estranged. Um, they had a very close relationship. Well, that's what I'm saying. Well, I think I'm putting pieces together, and I'm. I'm that's where the fuck that is coming from cuz I'm like I have a hunch uh-huh. that was not his doing. Wink 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 wink. Okay, okay, okay. So Janice is like, "Hello, I don't think so. I don't think David would neglect our son so harshly um because they were still close. It's not like they were even going through a fight. Like there's no reason." Right. Um but despite this, she just assumed, you know, well, maybe Stacy will be considerate and understand that, like, this is also his family. Um, so Stav- Stacy reached out to David Jr., the son, and gave him a couple things, including a plaster handprint he had made as a child. Wow, that's so generous. Uh, some old army bonds, a toy car, and a teddy bear. And that was nice. what he got out of the, out of the will. What, so, a, what a great present. What a gracious, kind... <sighs> To, what to a treasure. Hand print. What, what a treasure, treasure to, to bestow. So David Jr. asked Stacy if he could have some more time to brainstorm and try to come up with um, anything he might want from the uh, from his dad's stuff. She said, OK, I agree. That's fine. Take your time. If there's anything else you want, any more art projects from second grade you want, you just let me know and I'll hand them over to you. Mm. But this whole time, Janice, understandably, is super suspicious. Yeah. Uh, so she tells her son, David Jr., to call Stacy, his pseudo stepmom, and ask for some of David's tools to work on his car. Stacy tells David Jr., oh, sorry, I'm liquidating all of your dad's things. Uh, and there's nothing left to give you of your father's. Oh, okay. Uh, not only were all the objects left to Stacy to be able to liquidate them, but she also cashed in all three of David's retirement funds and kept all of the money for herself. Uh huh. So, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I the the old brain is doing a little work over here. But yeah. I, well, I feel bad gotta, too because like gotta figure it out. The, I never know when to like kind of lean into <laughs> the suspicious part or like when to make it seem like. Oh, she's just a sad widow. Like, I don't know. I never know where to lean. Um, I also never know because I'm always terrified to, like, Plot twist. I know. That I'm going to make you say, oh, I know what's going on. And then I... That I, like, victim blame someone. Yeah, exactly. I know. I I know. It's 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 hard. At what point do I confidently feel like I could publicly state, I think something silly is happening Let me just give you the big green flag to go ahead and uh, believe what you're believing. And I also want to add that I also kind of left out a little tidbit at the start, which is that the story is called Stacey Caster, a.k.a. The Black Widow. So... Bye. um, Okay. Now now you know. But I wanted it it to be a little bit of a mystery, you know. Uh, Thank you. Well, now now I know. (laughs) Just like elevate your anxiety a little bit um, as we go along. You're so welcome. So 
Once again, Stacy is this stoic widow. People notice that she bounces back very quickly from David's death, just like she had from Mike's. Yeah. Um, she awkwardly buried, buried David and Mike next to each other. So she oh, my bar- God. Yeah. And like their ghosts victims. are looking at each other like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, like, are you serious? First you, now me. Oh, my God. God. So she buried them next to each other. Again, this must be a blow to like the son who's like, hello, like I have no say and no rights in like my father's death. Well, that also, like, I was going to say, think of the families of the two men that are being yeah. buried. And, like, they, I feel like that's almost, you know, like, the cockiness of um, certain uh, criminals who, like, they think they can get away with it. And so they just, like, almost are begging for you to see the Yes. Ends. It's, like, I so like, obvious. I feel like burying your two dead husbands next to each other isn't the, it, like, it's definitely telling more than yeah. I think she meant it to. I could see her saying like, oh, the two men I love should be near each other so I don't have to be without either of them or whatever bullshit. But I feel like the family has started picking up on something at that You'd point. You think so, right? Especially when she's like stripping the family of any rights to yeah their 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 money their it's like rubbing their it in their face it's yeah exactly and like weird you'd think i mean i'm not i don't know this for a fact but i feel like a lot of people would at least have a say in where they're want to have a say in where their parents are buried or where yeah. but it sounds like she just kind of stripped all of their families of their rights in any <laughs> capacity like she yeah. gets to decide where they're buried she gets to decide what happens to the retirement funds to the art projects from elementary school i mean yeah it's showing a weird amount of need for control control and... exactly Mm-mm. exactly um so she's this kind of stoic widow she buried them the two men next to each other um and then basically moved on with her life she took a new job as a legal aide um which was uh she i would how do i put it like co- kind of consolation prize because she, she originally wanted to become a lawyer um, and then that kind of never happened. And so she ended up becoming a legal aide and said, like, well, this is the next best thing, sort of. Um, so yeah. she did that. Uh, there was a rumor that she had a new boyfriend because somebody saw a man pulling a Christmas tree into her house. Um, I once had a man pull a Christmas tree into my house because I had it delivered in Los Angeles. Um, oh, but, okay. you know, that guy wasn't my boyfriend. But um, <laughs> it could be. Could be. I don't know. Stacy didn't know that police were actually looking into David's death now because they had gotten a few red flags as well. Mm. Do Here's we know the thing. What oh, okay. Oh yeah. You want to know the red flags? What yeah. tipped them off? Yeah. So at the scene of David's quote unquote suicide, they had found two glasses, both containing traces of antifreeze. Oh shit. And under the bed, they found a container of antifreeze. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> And in the kitchen, a mummified lemon. (laughs) I was like, what? What?" (laughs) And in the kitchen trash, they found a turkey baster that smelled of alcohol and had been thrown away. Oh, okay. So investigators were like, well, that's enough red flags for us to keep tabs on this, you know? Which, like, it also reminds me of the cockiness of of criminals. It's like, all you had to do is throw that away and you would have been scot-free. Why did you leave the antifreeze under the bed? Yeah, like, you really didn't... What are you thinking? You really didn't think to put the murder weapon somewhere other than directly underneath him? Next to the body? It's yeah. just b- beyond me. So as time went on, investigators felt like they needed a true confirmed cause of death on Mike's uh, body, on Mike's death. And fortunately, he had not been cremated. You know, when you hear about the stories where, like, the partner has them cremated immediately so that nothing yeah. can be tested. Well, he had been buried um, and not cremated. So they exhumed his body uh, and were able to do some testing. And this was September 5th, 2007. They noticed pretty quickly that nothing seemed to be wrong with Mike's heart, even though he had allegedly died uh, of, uh, I don't know, a heart attack. Um, but there mm. was something strange about his Oh, wait, no, he hadn't died of a heart attack. That was the first guy. Yeah, Mike. What was it? Oh, Mike, Mike? Mike is the first guy. Sorry. Yeah. Yes, I'm getting all mixed up. I'm getting no, no, all mixed he, up. He was the one that, like, he, he said he the... felt really drunk and yes, dizzy. And, and dizzy. like, makes sense if he was maybe drinking mm-hmm. antifreeze. Exactly. So, yeah, so they had said he had allegedly died of a heart attack. And so um, they, did not- they didn't notice anything about his heart, but they did notice something strange about his kidneys. Um under a microscope, the doctor found microscopic crystals 
And these specific crystals form, which sounds painful as fuck, in a person's organs when they're poisoned with antifreeze. Mm. These like crystals formulate. So the detective who ordered the exhumation said, I knew at that point we had a double homicide and Stacy Castor probably killed both her husbands. Jesus. So, ding, ding, ding. Uh, their suspicions were confirmed. So what they did next is they got a warrant to tap Stacy's phone and they set up cameras. Um, and this is like where it gets into like a crime series like on TV where I'm like, whoa, when I hear about stuff like this happening in real life, like they're tapping her phone, they're setting up cameras. They set up a camera at the cemetery to mm. monitor like if she would come by or not. Like they, oh. I just love like how they're doing that's this. like and, CSI or something. Yes, it, it feels very TV show, but that's actually what happened. So they put a camera at the cemetery and it showed that Stacy did not once visit either of her husband's graves after their death, which uh -huh. is all circumstantial. Obviously, it's not or, you know, People it's not grieve differently. Yeah, it's not evidence of anything, but it is. Um, they were surprised because they were like, OK, so she's not even a little bit like, yeah, sad about this, I guess. Um, so I don't know what they were trying. Maybe they were trying to find something suspicious on camera, but they noticed instead of something suspicious, she just never showed up at all. Yeah. So detectives brought Stacy in for questioning. She was shocked by this. Um, they showed her photos of the glasses that they had found, like the drinking glasses in David's room, because Stacy had previously said she mixed a cranberry juice drink for David before he died. A cranberry juice mixed with what <laughs> <laughs> a cranberry juice cocktail of wink, wink. Yeah, yeah 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 uh so they this is um this is where it's like too stupid for a tv show this is like where if this were written in a script i'd be like i'm sorry that's just too ridiculous and we need to rewrite we need to rewrite stat okay they asked stacy if she remembered which glass she had used for the juice this is wild stacy said well when i poured the antifree i I mean, the cranberry juice. <gasps> Shut up. Well, <laughs> kidding was, me? was the next words out of someone's mouth, you're under arrest? I sure hope so. I like, hello? Oh my God. <laughs> Had she heard that their suspicions were about antifreeze? No. Oh my God. What a no, stupid person. They sorry. Not, sorry. I, but still I like, what they were you had thinking? not said anything. A band. They they literally said, "Oh, we found these two glasses. Which which one of these did you put the co uh, cranberry juice in?" And she said, "Well, when I poured the antifree, I mean cranberry juice." <laughs> this is why it sounds so made what? up. Oh my gosh, it's ridiculous. Okay. So you got to imagine the investigator was like, "Wow, that was easier than I thought." <laughs> um, it's like so, and the case is closed. <laughs> wow, that was fast. We can get home by dinner time. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so she tried to move on, I'm sure. Uh, but the detectives were like, oh, wait, what did you just say? And Stacy said, oh, well, I can tell you're trying to frame me for my husband's deaths. Oh, wow. So she double down quick. Double down said this is your fault, like gaslighting of the century. So she just got up and left and they let her leave. Um, and she called her daughter, Ashley, uh, who was the older daughter, who had just started college of course, the week that police were exhuming her father's body, which is like, mm -hmm. I'm sure a very difficult time, um, be, seeing as she's also the one who, you know, was carrying that guilt from seeing him on the couch and all that. So Stacy called Ashley and said, hey, the police are trying to blame me for your father's death. And Ashley is like, <laughs> imagine like first week in college and is like, I have enough to do. I have, you know, I'm, I'm trying to remember my roommate's name, let alone like deal with this. But Ashley is stunned that her mother is being accused of this and being blamed for this. Um, she couldn't believe anyone would suspect her mother of murder. But police visited Ashley at school where they told her about the antifreeze crystals in her dad's organs uh, and that they believed he had been murdered by her mother, which okay. again, this poor girl, like she just started I can't school. imagine having to... She Even, finally got away from home. Uh, not a got away, but, you know, she's finally, like, trying to branch out on her own. And it's like, nope. She's she trying to leave it in the past. Yeah. And just keeps showing up again. Keeps drag getting dragged back into it. Boy. So Ashley called her mom in tears after this visit. I can imagine why. And Stacy came by, picked her up after her last class and said, you know what? We've had terrible days. Let's go have a drink to unwind. Okay. Oh, shit. <laughs> no. Um. 
Oh no. This is real deal. Like this is so fucked up. I know. Just just say it quickly. So Stacy never had never drunk with her under 21 daughters before so ashley was like that's odd but i guess like you know my mom's just trying to like connect with me and like now i'm in college she wants to go have a drink um and so her mom she was like well okay my mom has a quote adult daughter now uh maybe she just wants to like go out on the town with me a little bit and uh, relieve some stress so ashley was like sure mom let's have a drink together so Stacy poured Ashley's first drink, and after a while, Ashley began to feel sick to her stomach. Um, and Stacy said, "Oh, don't worry, that's normal for antifreeze." Yeah, she said, "Here's a pill. This will help you feel better." Oh no! And Ashley just went to bed. Uh, in the morning, Stacy said they should drink again, and Ashley was like, "I don't, I don't know if I feel like it," but Stacy insisted, and they began to drink again the next morning. Um, this time Stacy mixed her a cocktail that was almost too disgusting for Ashley to stomach. Uh, but her mom told her to stick the straw into the back of her throat and to just swallow the drink without tasting it. Oh my God. Because this was a quote unquote cool trick from Stacy's younger years. Oh my God. Okay. What a sick, sick person oh this is. Oh my God. So her daughter did as her mom told her to do. <sighs> She began to feel sick again, and she went to lie down in her room. 18 hours later, her younger sister, Bree, found Ashley. She found her with her eyes open and glassy and her mouth agape, not responsive at all. And Bree screamed Ashley's name, and of course, Stacy came running and called 911 when she saw Ashley's condition. She told 911 operators, I think my daughter took some pills. (gasps) Ashley pretty quickly started throwing up. Poor Brie. I don't know how old she is at this point, but several years younger. So, you know. Wherever the fuck Brie is. Oh, my God. A child. Like, she was definitely a minor, a child when this occurred. Um, So, Ashley started throwing up. Brie left the room in terror. Stacy told the 911 operator that Ashley had taken Ambien and had drunk an entire bottle of vodka. What? I don't recall that but, like, happening. Isn't that also going to get so quickly proven in an autopsy? It's a great point. Although she probably gave her the Ambien in the pill. Maybe. But, but yeah, the, the the vodka, I don't know where where she would Yeah, uh, what? I don't know. It's just like I mean, either way, it's just I, a stupid story. I you, wouldn't you just want to be like, I don't know what happened. She must have taken something. Like, why the, would you say specifically vodka and Ambien if that's not what they're going to find? She must have taken something. Period. Period. Yeah. But also, like, how do you? I can't even like to. I mean, just to not even like think twice to not grieve about your kid. Like, it's to kill shocking. Your kid. Like, it's one thing for the for the partner, but to if your own child. This is where I was shocked, really, when I when yeah. I was researching this, because it's like, oh, 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 my God. Like, you hear about people who do this to their husbands, wives, which obviously horrible, not okay. but it, like there's there's something particularly primal and yes. instinctive about never wanting your kid to be there's hurt. something cold about like murdering your own child. I mean, obviously, that's like understatement of the century, but, but like colder colder that yeah exactly so she calls 911 she says oh she she drank she drank a whole bottle of vodka and took an ambient um brie pulled herself together and came back and um when she came back into the room she noticed something she seemed to have missed before it was a piece of paper she picked it up and stacy took it out of her hands and read it apparently it was a suicide note from ashley written by mom hmm, that- interesting hmm. it wasn't only a suicide note it was a confession as well Oh, okay. <laughs> the note what? was addressed to her mom, Stacy, and it admitted that Ashley had murdered her own father and her stepdad. Oh, what a perfect crime. <sighs> Are you okay. fucking kidding with me right now? Wow, that's so, so, so fucked. So fucked. The note opened with lines like, quote, I'm sorry all of this is happening to you, but now everyone will know what really happened and they know it wasn't you. It closed with, please don't hate me. Remember, I love you. Okay. Miraculously, thank Christ, doctors were able to pull Ashley from the very brink of death. She was, <gasps> she was, she's alive? She's, oh, she fucking survived, dude. Oh my God. She fucking no survived. No way. 
I know. Oh, that's such a happier ending to how I thought this was going. Thank God. She does. No one. The two daughters are fine, right? They're today. They're alive. Yes. Oh my God. Oh my God. I just thought you were about to like put me on another roller coaster. And Sorry. Like, and no, they're alive. Gone. They're alive. Thank God. Because she was, she was right on the, the brink of death. Like it her was eyes un- were open and unmoving. And yep. Oh my God. And she was unresponsive. Like they really didn't know if she would survive this or not. Um, when she was finally awake and recovered enough to talk to police detective detectives asked her about this note she had written and um surprise surprise she had no idea what note they were talking about she didn't Mm -hmm. even know what was going on she was like why Mm -hmm. am i here what happened um because the last thing she knew she was having a cocktail with her mom you know yeah um according to a 2009 interview uh she said quote i'm like what are they talking about i didn't do any of these things that you're saying that i did so she's just totally confused um at this point police are like okay we know what's going on here it didn't take much convincing that it was not ashley who had written this note uh detectives had already suspected stacy of both of these crimes and then they noticed a a strange typo in the suicide note her own name was misspelled or something (laughs) no but it said anti-free which earlier sounded sort of like she was kind of saying when i poured the anti-free and didn't finish but apparently she thought the word was anti-free no comment except but yeah so she apparently literally thought the word was anti-free and so So she actually admitted in her mind the entire word to the police yes exactly that's exactly what i was trying to say (laughs) exactly it wasn't even like she stopped herself mid-word yeah, it that was, was like the whole word that her. was she said the whole sentence and then went oh that's not what i meant to say you know ha 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 <laughs> so she thought it was anti-free so she wrote in the suicide note anti-free and they were like hang on that's so stupid like yeah. you, that's so stupid you made the same typo quote unquote in our interview so detectives arrested stacy on two counts of first degree murder and on one attempted murder Ashley could not believe what her mom had done. I mean, obviously, because she thought, oh, well, we're just having drinks together. And next thing she knows, she's being pulled from the brink of death at her mom's yeah. hand. I mean, yikes. Oy. In an interview, she also said, what gave her the right to play God with people? I never knew what hate was until now. Even though I do hate her, I still love her at the same time, which just is heartbreaking. And mm. these poor kids, they've gone through hell. I mean... Think about the trauma of both these kids now have endured. <laughs> it's horrific. Yeah. Oh my god, I, I I can't even imagine what they're up to in in the world. Like, I like, do you even? How do you I, go a day not thinking about this? I feel like every time we cover one of these, they're always just like kicking ass. You know, yeah. at the end, we're always yeah. like, damn, they're just living the best lives. So I hope that I hope for that for them. So Stacy, um, wow, shocker, maintained her innocence. She said, "What? Quote, I would die for my kids. Well, I call bullshit on that, but okay. Uh, utter, utter bullshit. Uh, like, this literally verifiably inaccurate what you're saying, you know? Right. She said, I would die for my kids. I could never hurt them like that, ever. My kids were my life. I could never do that to Ashley. It's just heartbreaking. Uh, Stacy's mother for what it's worth, who had been a lifelong fierce defender of Stacy through all of this. Uh, she not only defended Stacy's innocence, she actually spoke against her own granddaughter, Ashley, like believe, <gasps> believing her daughter that this was Ashley's doing, that Ashley had killed her dad and stepped on. Okay. What is wrong with the grandmother? Here? I know. What I know. is <sighs> just delusional? I don't know enough about the grandmother to make an opinion, but it feels like I can see where Stacy's, confidence came from confidence yeah yeah i guess so and just as a reminder for everyone um ashley would have been 12 when her dad died so like Mm -hmm. the they're basically accusing her of murdering her father when she was 12 years old yep and And doing it so pristinely that nobody ever caught on and getting away with it exactly exactly so she said this is like grandmother i love that granddaughter as much as anyone else in the family Ashley needs help if she did it. Okay. What? Okay. She said if she's wrong, she'll apologize to Ashley until the day she dies, but she doesn't think she's wrong about this. Right. So, so she won't have to apologize to so Ashley. So she won't. So don't worry. It's not going to come to this that. This is just filler words. Just just in case, theoretically speaking. 
So Stacy's defense team uh, searched the Castor house and found an old letter in Ashley's room written for her ex-boyfriend. And in this letter, she had discussed struggling with suicidal thoughts after her dad died. Um, The defense brought this to trial as evidence that Ashley was once, quote, suicidal when she was 12 and her father had died. And she was and she was the last person to see him alive. Yes. And his arm was up in the air. So he might have been struggling. And now she has to think about that every day. Exactly. But no, this is proof that now she's somehow his murderer and also tried to overdose you know Mm. whatever um they also argued that ashley must have been jealous of mike's preference for brie and perhaps uh resentful that their dad their dad likes their her sister better which is like what a horrible game to play you know in court especially because yeah you're just reminding her that like uh there was you're I just, wasn't there, but I'm guessing based on everything you're telling me, there was clear favoritism. So like now you're just reminding her like, oh, you were suicidal. You watched your dad die or you were the last person there when he was alive. Also, he didn't love you as much. Like they're like poking and poking and poking. And- yes. It's like dredging up all the horrible, horrible things that you are. That you have think to deal about with. yourself. Like yes. You think about him. Oh, my God. And then somehow trying to pin those against you in front of a jury. It's like, mm. yeah, it's very cold. Um For what it's worth, Ashley fully and firmly denied this. Uh, She said she doesn't even remember her father's alleged favoritism. She said she actually only remembers just having a happy childhood up to her dad's death. Okay. Um, And thank God, in the end, the jury didn't buy all this bullshit. And they convicted Stacey Castor of one count of second-degree murder for David Castor and one count of attempted second-degree murder of Ashley Wallace, her own daughter, and for forging David's will. So Oof. that was also part of the, the big plan. Wow. She was sentenced to 51 years to life in prison. And in 2016, she died of a heart attack at the young age of 48. So very Whoa. young. Yeah. Uh, in the courtroom, Ashley had one final thought to share uh, regarding her mom. Okay. And this is, uh, this is uh, Ashley, the daughter. And her sister is very sweet. Her sister, Bree, stood by her side as she read this out to to her mom. Okay, here we go. I never knew what hate was until now. I already read part of this, but we're just going to read the whole thing. I never knew what hate was until now. Even though I do hate her, I still love her at the same time. That bothers me. It is so confusing. Mm. How can you hate someone and love them at the same time? I just wish that she would say sorry for everything she did, including all the lies. As horrible as it makes me feel, this is goodbye, mom. As hard as you tried, I survived and I will survive because now I'm surrounded by people that love me. I'm going to do good things in this world despite making me, in every sense of the word, an orphan. (gasps) Goose cam. Oh, wow. So that is the story of Stacey Castor, the Black Widow. Wow. Just like how you said earlier that every time we have had a story that had survivors who are still, you know, doing things today, they do seem to be beyond successful so strong so so, like you know focused on justice just like i I do hope that for for the two sisters i hope that whatever they do is like i hope they at least just have like peace and they deserve the easiest life on earth just like (laughs) happiness and peace yes agreed agreed like i don't expect them to do anything productive like i I, hope they're happy i hope you just get paid to sit on a couch all day if that's what you want like you just (laughs) you've you've done it you've gone through enough trauma if if not start a podcast because that that'll do it for you (laughs) hey oh there you go Uh, (sighs) oh wow well that's definitely um you know sad that it happened but it, it's it is a good story yeah um, yeah but it's still tough that other people went through it but i know um, i know i feel like hard we both came with hard hitters today we did yeah these are like very classic and that's why we drink stories you know i know i maybe I, I, hey it took 300 episodes but we we we're made doing it a, back we're to doing a roots. full victory lap now <laughs> um man okay well i guess i'm really excited for our after chat today okay uh because i think we finally get to talk about something (gasps) what are we talking about (laughs) the show oh well the tour's over Ah! we're talking about that in our after chat i guess so why not or okay because i feel like if we talk about it in a in a in an episode it's going to be two hours of just it's truly going to be so long of us you're basically going through the entire tour so you're completely right 
If you happen to be a member of Patreon, uh, please go and listen to our after chat this week where we finally get to tell you ah! what the whole secret of our live show has been this entire time. Chaos. 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 True chaos. Uh, and yeah, that's I guess that's it for this week, huh? I can't wait. Let's go chat about it. And that's why we drink. <laughs>